Hey guys, how's it going? Angus here. I am back in Perth and it is crazy hot. We just had a 40 degree day. It's about 10 o'clock at night. It's finally cooled down enough for me to do like a video. Alright, so here we are back in Chivalry and what I want to show you is, for example, my character stands still and then runs or walks. This is actually an animation built into the game. So, like the legs moving like that, you know, I run, he raises a sword up. Uh, I can do a charge, so if I run up enough and then build up enough stamina, I can just uh, charge like that. And so swing, duck. You know, this, these are all animations that are in the game. So we can take advantage of these to actually pose our character very easily. It, even the death animation is built into the game. And we can use this to pose our character for printing. Alright, so again, you can eat the three main programs that we all use all the time. U-Model to rip the files from the game. Milkshape to pose and uh, use the animations and convert to an OBJ, which we can use in Mesh Mixer to then fix up the mesh for 3D printing. And you'll probably need to use the uh, NetFab Cloud Servers to finally repair the mesh for printing. So, you want to go into U-Model, fire it up. And for a start, we want our character. So. Just um, untick un animations, textures, light maps, uh, leave scale for mesh and static mesh on. And I assume you've already ripped cook PC separately from your chivalry folder because you don't want to do this in the same folder. Again, uh, I tell, you, tell, tell us in all the videos, you don't want to damage <laughs> the existing files. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to go into cook PC, uh, age of chivalry and characters and you want to find the character that um, best represents you in the game and I love my vanguards so look at the vanguard and that's what we want um, page up page down to navigate so we don't want the gore version because that's going to be the one you if you get your arm cut off or something all the parts are separate we want the um, animation rig skeletal mesh so control X to download and export that. And we can close U model. So you'll have like a little folder which saves it there. So I've got a uh, Vanguard there. And then you want U model to open again. But this time untick everything except animation. And open that. And we go into the conveniently named folder called animation. And this is where all the animation files for the games game uh, are kept. So there's various different types and really it's a bit of trial and error to be honest. What I've found it's tricky finding the right animation so with the Vanguard if I can find it um, Vanguard I think 3P means one-handed weapons or something uh, I'm not quite sure and I actually ended up using the longsword one, which is actually a knight weapon. But it seems to work for the pose I want. I don't know, so I'm going to export um, export that one. Control X. Oh. Whoops. Okay, let's go back. Sorry, you want to do export, my bad. So I'll export the longsword. But I'll also export the uh, vanguard one, because you can just try them out and you know, see which poses work for you. Worst case, you just assign an animation to the wrong map, to the wrong um, scale or mesh, and just spaz out. But it looks quite funny anyway. So we're done with your model. We can close all that. And now you want to fire up. Oh, that's my lovely face. You want to fire up milkshake. And I'm going to have a scotch break. I had to put the scotch in the fridge because it was like 40 degrees. It was horrible. Anyway. Uh, you want to open PSK and find the animation, oh, sorry, find the model. So, where is he? New model, Vanguard, there we go. Skeleton mesh. Again, it's a bit of trial and error. Um, this is the animation rig one. And with uh, Milkshape, it's really important to note that you can't change the mesh without actually clicking animation and going into animation mode. That, I always keep forgetting that, so 
down the bottom uh, right here, animation. So if you want to manually change him, you can sort of select, for example, a joint. See, I've selected that shoulder joint. Rotate, and then you can sort of pull it around like that, and you can you can pose him manually. But I don't have the skill or the patience for that, so we're going to cheat and use the animations in the game to pose it for us. So I go to File, Import again, and same setting, PSK, but it's PSA is what we want, so that's the animation. So go to U Model, and they're in here somewhere. If I can find them again. Come on, there we go, U Model Export, Vanguard. Yes. Sweet, so that took about a minute of loading and I've got an i7 um, CPU and it's a pretty powerful computer so give it some time and be a bit patient but now we've got our animations loaded and uh, if we just kick, you know, click play we can watch it um, go through the animations so it's really struggling. I think it's because I've got the webcam and the recording, screen recording running at the same time. Um, but we can probably sort of go through it bit by bit, so here we go. So you can see all the different animations they've got for different weapons, sort of, you know, overheads, slashes, stabs, all sorts. So we can choose a key f sort of frame, if you like, in a pose that we, we, we think's good, and it can be anything, really. You know, look, oh, I'm dead now. <laughs> and we can save that as an OBJ. Very easily just going file, export, obj, and just say yes, whatever, you know, let's go dead. And I've already got heaps saved just to, to show you, but, um, and then you can just go back after it saves and make some more. So this is the one I just did, the dead <laughs> pose. <laughs> Look at that face. He's like, ah. Uh, lol. Okay, so that's that's the dead pose. Let's have a look at other ones. Uh, we've got a waiting pose. This is the one I ended up going with. So this was in the uh, long sword animation. It's like you know the knights how they sort of wait, holding their swords. Uh, it works equally well with a vanguard. And you can just slot any two-handed weapon you like into there. Uh, I've also saved a charge, which I thought was really cool. So this is him just about to charge with a one-handed weapon, like a hatchet or something. You yeah, know that's that's really good. And you can save heaps and then, you know, choose the ones that you like the best. So let's say that we're going with the uh, waiting one. So, you know, you know the spiel now. Basically, it looks good, but it's not ready to print yet. It's got heaps of errors which we need to correct. But one of the main issues it has at the moment uh, is actually, sorry, it's got two main issues. One of them is the skirt or armor. I, Someone please correct me on what the actual correct term is for his, his armor there. Um, it's only a, it's zero thickness, it's only one single layer. And therefore it, it can't physically print. Uh, so that's one problem. The other problem is it's quite pixelated. Because it's a game mesh, it's been optimized to run in the game and you hide the uh, low polygon count with textures. But we're 3D printing it so you want to get rid of that polygon count. So to smooth over the mesh, it's really a how much time do you have sort of thing and we want to use the remeshing tool for it so you go to select and you use a sphere brush to select the areas you want to remesh so let's just say his torso is just a bit too pixelated for my liking and go around here select these triangles because it'd be really obvious you know how pixelated it is oh, sorry low polygon count it is and we can go to remesh and smooth and add lots of triangles in and you can instantly see like that's going to make the print look much better. So just go to accept. And you know we can do that lots of different places. You have to be careful like on the face because you don't want to lose the details of the face. So again it, that's what I mean it's sort of like a, how much time you want to invest into it. And uh, the skirt thing is another issue. So there's a few different ways we can tackle it. One thing I found is if I go to uh, edit and separate shells, that area of the, the mesh is actually um, separate, it's actually, it, the armor is completely separate. So we can sort of um, select that and also these little flat bits, they sort of make the join when it's when it's moving. 
we can combine those and then we can do uh, what's called an extrude because what I'm worried about is if I send this to the uh, Microsoft um, NetFab cloud service you might think oh, I'm actually going to completely ignore this surface because there's nothing there which would mean when it fixes it it just completely removes it we, we don't want that to happen we want it to still be there even if it gets changed slightly so you can use the extrude option so if we go to select uh, we're only selecting because we did separate shells that one area so we can just click around the entire thing it's only going to select um, what well, the shell that we've clicked on and we go to edit and extrude which is here <laughs> this is obviously incorrect so we want to choose uh, normal like we did with the uh, Christmas hat and we'll just make it internally maybe 0.5 so it's minus yeah, 0.5 so it gives it just enough thickness that um, repair mesh repair software can actually understand this is actually meant to be there and not destroy it and really that's pretty much fine so I could spend all day you know, smoothing it fixing it but I don't really have the time because it's almost you know, 11 o'clock so I'm just gonna combine these shells again and save this as an STL sorry export it Do you know what I'm doing there export as an STL so shift yes. and, and then we can send this to the netfab cloud service which is very easy to do you just go to netfab sorry cloud.netfab.com and upload your STL file and when you download it again I'll show you what it will probably look like so let's replace this with the fixed one which probably in my downloads folder so this is one I prepared earlier, which has been through the NetFab cloud service. You can see I thickened up the skirt, but NetFab still decided to fill in the middle part, which is fair enough. I mean, there's, there was probably sort of gaps and all sorts of horrible geometry in there. And because we're printing it, you know, it needs some strength to it anyway. So this is a fully 3D printable file now. If you go to separate shells, you see it's a single, um, you know, single shell, no, no gaps, no holes, everything. And it's good to print. So obviously with my guy, um, he's lost his head now, but he was done in bits because my printer can only print up to uh, 120 mil at a time. So you can just use NetFab um, Basic to slice it, or you can also use Mesh Mixer to slice very easily. Just change it to slice. And you end up with you know, different parts and you can print them at your own leisure and then glue them together later. So that's it for the guys. So the next uh, video I'll be showing you how to actually get the weapon 3D printed and looking good. So obviously imagine if you're scaling a sword down to a scale model size, it becomes paper thin, especially when it comes to the Zelviger, which is like my favorite sword in chivalry. So I'll be showing you how to actually extract that and thicken it artificially. So it still looks like a sword, still looks good, but it's actually physically possible to print. And then after we do that, I'll be showing you how to finish and paint your model and you'll be all done with your custom made chivalry medieval warfare figure or any sort of figure from any unreal um, game engine or heaps of other things anyway thanks guys for watching i've probably got heat stroke i'm just talking deliriously and i'll see you soon here in maker's muse thanks guys bye